here we go. Rotate around slowly. There you are. <laughs> That's a half robe and swivel. <laughs> what are you talking about? I did it when the music was done. I did. It when- I know. I you know we. I was already swiveled because you know I'm I'm at the helm of the controls here. So I just like to watch you swivel. So uh, that's exactly what I do. But uh, right. hey, we're here. How's it, how's it going, dude? It's going phenomenal. How are you doing? Like Zeno's- Mike Zeno, Scott Bassman. Uh, oh, hold on. Yeah, mute that. with one of guys. Nice. Yeah, you got to mute the Facebook there on your uh, phone so you can take the comments. I got comments it. I got it. Not have to go. But Scott, what are we? What are, what's the name of my show? Give people maybe it's someone's first time watching us and they're wondering why are these guys looking all funny in robes. Let's talk about it. Funny robes with, the with a with the disorganized office in back. I'm getting a new office soon. I'm really excited. Uh, we are we are the Land Geek guys, and this is Nightcap. This is our weekly show where we talk land investing uh, over a drink. Nice. What do you got tonight? I have, well, tonight, Laura and I, for our anniversary, we're up in Portland, Maine. And so I have the Hacienda, the Mexican Lager. And I have, is this called a Grumman? Lager? I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Can you say uh, the word L-A-G-E-R for me, please? Uh, Mexican Lager. So Lager. Who says Lager? Look at this thing. It's awesome. Um, we had a great killing time. You. And, uh, you know, it's, gr- yeah, I know, I'm killing you. But, hey, it's great to be here. We actually have a nice topic for this evening. Uh, have I told you the topic yet? I like to keep you up. It's kind of like the real, the show becomes like the overall, you complete me because you like have no clue and I just get to throw it at you and then see your reaction. Uh, Partly my fault because uh, I just had a crazy couple days. I've got a lot of baseball games going on. It's just, you know, so uh, you yourself to prepare an agenda for tonight, uh, a syllabus. It's very nice of you. I appreciate it. Since you're the, so, face, uh, you're the Facebook guy here, we, how many viewers we got? We got people watching us right now? Have we got yeah. some live viewers? Any we comments got, come got, through we yet? Got, we, got a few, we got a few viewers. Uh, some of our regulars are on. Barbara Tibbetal, she likes the pop collar. <laughs> Did you notice? You didn't say anything. The other thing you didn't say anything about was uh, my new AirPods. Huh? Which well, I don't know. I wonder if the AirPods are causing an internet connection to be a little lagging because I seem like you seem to kind of flicker in and out. You think it's the AirPods? Do I seem no, like I if, I, if I frozen it all on you? No? You're, you're a little right. laggy. You're a little laggy sometimes with your lagger. <laughs> oh, um, that's good. That's yeah, that was a good one, huh? That's good. Oh, uh, so let's see here. Barbara Thibodeau, uh, she likes the pop collar. Andy Wilmers is here, as always. Uh, hey, killing Andy. it, Mike Lega. Lega, L A G A. Lega. Lega, yeah. Look uh, at this thing. Professor Zeno and Matthew Porter, the jitter as well. Well, I don't, I don't know what to say, guys. Hopefully, uh, hope that'll, hopefully what, that'll uh, subside. Was there a little bit of uh, someone else saying that you're getting a little frozen in and out there? Or is it me too? Just maybe one of us or both of us? Maybe a little bit of a, yeah, maybe a little bit of a lag or whatnot. So. Okay. Well, let's so anyway, see. Hopefully that'll fair. balance out. So tonight's show, Scott, so you know, is about yeah. sc- scaling the business. Because, you know, I often call, you know, the land investing is a very unique niche, right? But then there's the niche within the niche, as I like to say. And that's the fact that in the end, we're not doing oh, the hey. business, right? Yes. One sec. Okay. We're having some requests from the viewers. You have you have it on speaker view right now, and they would prefer the split screen. Oh, I got you. Let me see if I can do that. No, that's not to not interrupt it. you. No, 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 no. How's that? Ask our viewers if it's changed. Uh, let's see. 
I think it's a better option. That's a good. That was good feedback. It's about twenty second lag on their end, but I think we got yeah. it. Yes. I'm waiting. There it is. Yes, we're good. Please continue. Maybe start over. Now we're okay. good. Okay. Scaling the business. So the niche is the land investing, right? That's the you know a very unique niche. Um, but the niche within the niche is the fact that we automate, we delegate, we develop systems, and we use all those to what we say is scale the business. So I think that tonight's show is gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be about scaling the business. So it's a really broad topic, right? But there are some ways we can break it down. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, keep popping that caller. Everybody sees it. I think that, uh, I, I think that's what's interesting is that, uh, you know, at the beginning, it can seem kind of like, how the heck would I even scale this, right? How do I take myself and, as the E-Myth always talks about, one of my favorite books, you know, you have that entrepreneurial seizure and you begin to work in your business, but you need to start to work on your business, right? There's a big difference there between the two. And Mark always, uh, you know, harps on that. And so that's what I'd like to talk about tonight, Scott. So initial reactions. So just let me just step back, scaling the business, initial reactions. I'll let you, you have the mic. Scale, scalability. I love the word. Uh, word. Scalability. Love scalability i love the word i love the notion the scalability uh, yeah cheers um yeah so you know the powerful thing about this business is it is scalable and you can go from you know it, it, as matt forbes says I, I stole this from my life i love it i use it all the time it's a slow turn you start out working in this business maybe 10 hours a week you know if you're really motivated more 15 hours a week but a couple of years into it, when you're bringing in a lot of passive income and, uh, you know, it just gets easier and easier and easier with the development of your systems, the time in your business goes down significantly. So as your income goes up and your time goes down, I mean, that's like nothing better than that, right? Yeah. And you know what I think is interesting too, when you start the business out, you know, you say 10 hours a week, I think truly someone can move the needle in a couple hours a week. I think what happens yeah. though it's very exciting when you go into a new endeavor, right? And there's a lot of different areas that you begin to kind of think about things maybe you haven't thought about before, uh, in particular to the land investing and all the different parts. So you can get caught in this kind of whirlwind, right? Where, as was taught to me, uh, you know, my, my first coach, uh, you know, under the land geek was uh, Jeff Axton. And he would always say, there's the, there's the whirlwind, right? There's this, this whole idea of all these other processes processes that you can get um, involved in, but then there's the mailing and the marketing, the heart of it all. So in the beginning, you get very excited and it's very easy to take your take your mind and, and just kind of, you know, basically lose your mind and, and, and go into all these different areas, right? But really the focus. And so we talk about flight school a lot, and this is not a flight school show, but one of the reasons why it's so good is that uh, it Scott keeps you focused exactly what you need to do, right? So you get that couple hours a week, you can truly move the needle forward. So you're right. And I love what you said about with Matt Forbes. And I, I was thinking, I, I think I said this one of our round tables that it's like running a marathon. The only difference is at the end, the miles are quicker because you actually have now created these systems and these automations. So yeah. So yeah. scalability, great word. Scalability. Nice. <laughs> so let me, let me kick in uh, to, yeah, little, please. and also, so y'all know we're on a little bit, we started a little bit later tonight. Hopefully, uh, we you know gave some people on the west coast a little bit time to chill down a little bit because we know that you know it was a big three hour difference so we were thinking of them tonight right we wanted to give them some time to you know relax a little bit get the nightcap drink ready so um you know uh, it's all good on this end i like mixing to, it up we're always mixing it up around here yeah and i like to burn the midnight oil so and that's the thing yeah. about it um I think scott todd brought this up one time people were like yeah you know uh he's like who says you have to do this during the day you know, you could literally take the whole day off if someone wants to work at night, do it. And you could work this at any hour. It's really got that uh, adaptability, right? So, yep. and I think that plays into the scalability. Ah, adaptability. Ah. Scalability. Couple abilities there, huh? <laughs> A couple, couple abilities. abilities. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, let me off. pause. I don't get to see comments. We got any comments? Let me pause. Uh, let's see. So... Well, Andy's asking, so we start at 9.30 Eastern next week. Andy's just, you know, it's how we are. We're a little bit, we're, we're going to leave oh, it to. he wants us to uh, start earlier. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he wants necessarily. He might want us to start a little later, but Barbara Thibodeau says she's dying. It's so late where she is. So she doesn't like it. Oh. We can't make everybody happy. 
you know, we were just trying to help out those West Coasters, you know, uh, and uh, we'll have a quote about the uh, Yankees later. I can't show that now. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to our nice. other yeah, segment. Yeah, yeah, I love that. <laughs> uh, and then one more comment. I got to give a shout out to my beautiful, smart, amazingly funny wife. She's at the baseball game watching Nightcap. So Awesome. That's See dedication that? right there. She's like, that's my husband right there in the robe. <laughs> that's right. Showing everybody, showing all the fans, look at this idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so let me talk a little bit about scaling, and I want to throw some – it's going to be basically – a long drawn out you complete me episode but i like oh, that nice. yeah you know so scott one of the things i like to talk about the business and the reason why yeah there it is there's that famous uh sport movie what's it are you called a drama what do you call that movie it's a, it's a love movie it's a love movie it's a love story Jerry Maguire. it's a love story you complete me jerry yes <laughs> so it's a repeatable redundant process aka boring I mean, so I always tell people when they come in, the good news, the bad news about our business, it's boring. And why is that the uh, good news too? Because unlike buying several houses in an area, right? And you could, they're all built in the same year. It'd be like, um, you know, you can't just say they're all going to be the same, different use, different care, different, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, all these different things about it. The land, if I buy 30 lots in New Mexico, it's imaginary lines, dirt. It's effectively the same. A few bushes, a tree here and there. Um, so that boring component allows it to be put into a system. So there's the good news and bad news, everybody. It's boring. But the boring brings the excitement because you pull yourself out of it very quickly. So what do you think of that, Scott? This is the you complete. Uh, your thoughts on that, this repeatable redundant process, also known as boring. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, and and it's boring in the sense that, I mean, it's not, it, when you look at a deal from beginning to end, it's almost easy. Um, you know, it's a very, it's not to say that, uh, developing your land buying and land selling machines is easy per se, but when you look at the process of, you know, from beginning to end purchasing and selling a property and you lay it all in a number of, lay it all out in a number of steps, you, you kind of look at it on paper. You're like, man, that doesn't really look that difficult, right? right. You're buying five or 10 acres of land. And I mean, everybody's bought a house or a lot of people bought a house or a condo or a townhouse or whatever. I mean, how difficult a process is that? How stressful is it? Uh, that's, that's something that, that I wouldn't want to do every day. But when you look at buying and selling a piece of property and you lay it all out there, it, it, it is boring. It's somewhat easy. Uh, it is redundant. It's repeatable. And that allows you to really perfect your systems as you say, in the micro environment, you do it yourself first. Right. And then you are able to easily pass it off to somebody else and s swivel. Ah, there he goes with the swivel. Huh? I love it, the swivel. Hey, Scott, I just yeah. figured out how I can see the comments. So you don't have all the power anymore. I see comments. I figured it no out. Way. I do. And, I, and how come you didn't? Jeannie's on here and she said she loves it all on the west coast genie i agree I, about, I can't say all the comments when you're talking so much oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right but i all right, i won't peek over there but anyway I'm i kidding. have to give a shout out to genie she frequents uh, uh frequently joins us on the round table she's awesome her and her husband kurt kurt just won a um weightlifting competition so shout out to kurt oh no kidding yeah yeah very cool very so wow, awesome good stuff. for him so um Let's talk a little bit more about the scalability or do you All want right. to move into our first segment? Because we are, what would you like to do? We can do our first segment. It's up to you. What's the first segment anyway today? What will today's first segment? Well, the segment? first segment is typically the Facebook quote of the week or question of the week. Good night. Right, why don't we do I that? Do and then we could, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Facebook question or quote of the week. I got a couple, yeah. I got a couple questions this week, actually. All right, let's hear them. One from our very own Matt Forbes, the refill guy. The refill guy. Yeah. So let me pull that up here. A technical so advisor. Matt, Matt had a good question actually tonight. And he said, any good suggestions on how to have an out-of-country seller get a, get a notary to sign the deed? So the, the seller's out of country and needs to, needs to notarize the deed uh, over to Matt. And uh, we had a good answer from Barbara Tipito. 
she said, let's see, uh, and Annie Wilmers. Annie Wilmers said lawyers should be able to notarize any deed, uh, 20 to $40 plus a little bit of running around. Uh, we don't have public notaries in Canada, so I need to find other options. But Barbara Thibodeau uh, had a very good uh, answer. Uh, find your local consulate uh, if, you happen to, if there happens to be one, and uh, you can get documents notarized in that fashion, assuming they're a U.S. citizen, which, Matt, I'm not quite sure uh, if that's the case or not. But, um, Mark, Mike, ever uh, had, had a situation like that? No, uh, well, sort of. We bought from someone who is overseas and um, we needed to get the notary seal. So they ended up, actually, that is what they did. They went to, uh, uh, you know, to a, to a consulate, you know, so I would have probably said the same thing. Uh, we did have that one time. I don't do a lot of transactions, you know, with people, but they happen to be overseas. And so, yeah, one time that happened. This one time right. at Bandcamp, I... Uh, I had an overseas notary. <laughs> All right. Okay. Excellent. On to the next. On to the next. Uh, on to the next. On to the next. Probably because you remind, Facebook me, Facebook. You remind me of you of a musician with that pop collar. That's what this, got me thinking that. Yeah. Really. Okay. Uh, <laughs> here, here's the other. This is a very simple question, but there are there may be some people that are not aware what this means. But I thought I would bring it up. So we had a question from KT Lit Catherine is her name. She's new to the community. She has just purchased the investor toolkit and she posted a question on June 2nd, my 30, my 43rd birthday. Uh, what is happy birthday? Uh, wait a minute. Wait, whoa. Happy belated birthday. I didn't know about this. Yeah, you, you knew. You <laughs> okay, knew. I knew. <laughs> I, uh, anyway, uh, Catherine asked, what is weekly office hours? Mike, we, you, you hear that term a lot uh, in the community. So explain to the investor toolkit people what weekly office hours is. Okay. Hopefully I'm not, you got a little lag with you there. Did you, did you see like, I'm, do I feel like I'm freezing up in it you all? Or is it just on the other end? Hopefully. The, it's probably uh, me. That's okay. Hey, I forgive you just so you know. <laughs> office hours are Thanks. phenomenal. So they, they come in a few different ways. Coaching clients get them, but they're separate from the flight school. Flight school office hours are after you go through those 10 pre-programmed calls with Scott Todd, you have this reactive period where you'll probably be buying land or you'll be dealing with some, uh, you know, some sort of uh, part of the business that you want to have clarity on. And one of the uh, land geek coaches uh, will coach, will, will host the office hours and you can ask questions. So it's really a, a great asset. And then we have one separate for coaching clients. So it's just something that's, uh, um, it's just really uh, helpful, you know, because it gives you, and even if you don't have questions, you go on because other, listen, we're all doing the same business model. So you're going to be able to, uh, you know, uh, learn from everybody else's questions. So it's really good. Great question, by the way. Yeah. Awesome. All right. There's our Facebook questions of the week. Hopefully that helps. I think people. it's time to bring up a special guest before we get on to our, and before we go on and on to our uh, topic of scaling. Can we bring him up? I mean, I think we kept him waiting long enough. You yeah, let's do that. Time? All right. Yeah, for sure. So I'm about to promote him from an attendee to a panelist because I have the power to do so. So uh, as I do that, maybe you'd like to say who it is or here we go. Yeah. I I can do that. All right. You ready? I'm so everybody, uh, okay, I'm ready. Everybody tonight, our special guest is Larry O. Alum. Been around for a few years. And I want to uh, touch base with Larry, see how he's doing. And he is actually on the precipice of a very exciting journey in his life, which I'll let him talk right. about here in a minute. Uh, but Larry Overstreet, nice to have you. Nice to see you. Thank you. It's good to be here, guys. I always enjoy uh, listening into the nightcap, so it's fun to be on the side of the screen. And you nice, make us great. jealous with that with that mic you have there. We're we're about to upgrade to those. Those are, that's incredible. I really like that. It's it's a nice mic. It's a, it's a Yeti, your blue Yeti mic. Um, I, I use it for a little bit of radio work that I do, and also for some podcasting. All right. The you got a nice Yeti. radio. Yeah, I've got a face made for radio too. <laughs> that's awesome you do it is very uh, it's a very good voice i like that so uh so anyway 
I I I I, uh, I, I interrupted I, your uh, interview. No, you're fine, Larry. You've been you've been in the land community quite a while. So tell us how you found Mark and kind of how you got. Uh, did he freeze on you, Larry? Uh, he did. So I'll I'll just start in. Um, yeah. So uh, I think I found Mark on the original uh, Land Geek podcast, uh, probably in 2014. And um, I believe that was as a result of him being on an interview with Kevin Buff's podcast. And you know how the podcasters, you know, have each other on their shows. So it, eventually you, you don't know quite how you figured out uh, that somebody was, you know, out there. Um, but started listening in and... Um, it, the whole business model just made sense. I could understand why people would want to get rid of land that they were tired of and would be willing to sell it at a discount. I could understand why other people would have dreams about how they might use it, would want to buy it, you know? And if you can get in there and be the um, a, a person who facilitates all of that and finances it, that seems like a good thing. So um, I bought the toolkit and I was looking back at my first deal. It was January of 2015. Um, so I probably bought the toolkit right at the end of 2014, read it and, you know, kind of dove in. Um, at that time, we didn't have some of the things that are available now, uh, including flight school that you mentioned a few minutes ago. And so I, I dove in on my own and tried to make sense out of it and, you know, had listened to all the back episodes of the podcast. Um, but that was about what I had to run with right at that moment. Um, I was looking forward to uh, going to boot camp, but just hadn't had a chance to be there yet. Um, and so by the time I got to boot camp, I had bought 12 properties and sold none. And I was scared out of my mind um, because I didn't oh, wow. know if I could actually sell a property or not. <laughs> the buying part you know, seemed easier than the selling part. Uh, so I put the brakes on the buying part until I got to boot camp. And um, uh, you know, then I kind of uh, got a kick out of hearing everybody else's stories that were really slur, um, that everybody just about makes that same mistake of, of hitting the brake pedal right at the wrong time. Um, so I did kind of make it through that period. Um, that first boot camp that I went to was, uh, it would have been 2015 Orlando. Um, and Mike, you were there. Jeff Axton was there. Um, Eric Peterson was there. Uh, Scott, I don't know if you were there or not. Scott, uh, uh, Scott Todd was there, but I'm not sure if you were there for that. Before my time. Okay. Um, but a lot of, a lot of folks who are, you know, still in the community today, it was a lot of fun to just meet people in person, um, build some relationships there. Um, unfortunately, uh, some of the, some of the boot camps happen in hot places in the hot time of the year. And, you know, so it's not, not really my, my idea of fun to go to Scottsdale in August. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll get back to one here pretty soon. One one place or another, maybe back in Orlando. That one's pretty nice. Um, anyhow, so I kind of got a little bit more balance worked out and, and figured out how to sell a few things. Um, I was posting a few ads on Craigslist at the time, probably one per property, and then just kept renewing it um, without you know, any idea of what you could do with posting nomination or any of that kind of stuff either. Just some of these, again, some of these supports that have come along, whether they're processes or software or the VAs or whatever, all of that stuff, you know, just wasn't there two or three years ago. Um, and so it's fun to see how the community has grown. Um, anyhow, uh, at the time, I was also a, an owner of a, an IT, an IT consulting company. And, um, that was my day job and that, you know, rightly deserved to have the bulk of my attention. Um, but at a certain point, it was sort of getting in the way of my land business. And uh, we had other, you know, rainbows we wanted to chase anyway, my wife and I. Um, our young uh, uh, child is just about to leave the nest and uh, she's 20 and looking for her own apartment. Um, so we're getting ready to kind of launch into that next adventure uh, that uh, you were talking about a moment ago. And I think the land business is really just about perfectly cut out for what we have in mind, um, which is to sell our house. We got an offer on it today, so hopefully that'll all work out well. Um, and then uh, we're moving out of our house and into our driveway, not exactly, but into the RV that's in our driveway, uh, and then hitting the road as full-time RVers. And, and um, 
I'm not retiring. I'm just switching careers into, into, you know, full-time land business. And we're in the process now and have been for the last you know, couple of months of kind of hitting the gas pedal more strongly and uh, ramping, ramping the business up. But you can do it from anywhere. That's awesome. Um, Scott, can you, are you, I want to make sure Scott, <laughs> there you are. You're there. I'm really, I notice I'm really lagging. I apologize. Oh, that's so. good. Larry, that's great. Yeah, yeah, it was great meeting you back in, uh, wow, it's been, time flies, huh? It go, it goes yeah, over. it sure does. It sure does. So talk so about that Barbara brake pedal. Well, oh, sorry. I wanted to just ask about the brake pedal you brought up. The, uh, uh, you know, in fact, you know, you have properties and you get a little nervous and you put that brakes on. Some people who are new coming in may not understand exactly the reference of what you, what you, the point you're making with that. Sure. So, you know, you end up um, hopefully uh, doing your marketing and uh, mailing and through the mailing, you get to buy out there who want to sell it. Um, and then you start marketing that property. And for whatever reason, and I don't know why, but everybody seems to have uh, this experience, you end up with more land than you think you can sell. You know, it's, a, I think it's a confidence thing. It's a, it's a, um, it's where your head is at. Um, not necessarily reality, but you've put, you know, if, if you're buying properties for 500 or a thousand bucks a piece and you buy six or eight or 10 or 12 of them, you know, all of a sudden you'd like to see some of that money coming back. Uh, and maybe your spouse would like to see some of that money coming back too, you know? Um, and so the, the temptation is to stop mailing, which dries up the source of, you know, uh, the, the, um, the, deal uh, flow. the funnel, yeah, the, the deal flow and, and the funnel of, of new properties coming in. And then, you know, you, you turn around and sell them in the most bizarre ways. And, and sometimes in a week, you can sell a bunch of property and maybe you didn't sell anything for a month or two, you know, right. um, as you're just getting started. You know, you don't quite know what you're doing and kind of floundering around a little bit. Um, you won't flounder around if you're in flight school and you won't flounder around if you're in coaching, but if you're doing it on your own, you I floundered around, you know? Um, right. And so it's, it's um, uh, just, I think a natural tendency to, to want to say, you know, Whoa, maybe I'm getting too far over my ski tips here. Um, you know, when, when you're just learning how to buy property and you haven't quite learned how to sell it yet. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, Great point. I think there's a lot of people that probably can relate to what you're saying right now in terms of, you know, because in the beginning, that's the first thing you focus on is the acquisition. So of course it comes, you begin to get better at that than the marketing because it's the first thing you're focusing on. So mm -hmm. um, it's a very good point. Boss man. Well, it, and one of the, one of the things that came out of um, boot camp uh, that really had an impact on me was the importance of building a mailing list. And you just, you know, I didn't think about that. That wasn't part of what was in my head as far as the important things to go do. Um, and so I, you know, uh, uh, I think now you, if you buy the toolkit, you get like a whole uh, uh, set of emails to send out a responder list or something like that, you know, and we didn't have that back a few years back, you know. And so right. I decided, okay, I'll put together an email list. And so I hooked it up to my um, website so that they could, subscribe and MailChimp and all that. And then dang it, somebody subscribed. And I ended up with this guy on my email list and I had to send him something and I hadn't wrote anything to send him yet. And so um, I, I was I almost embarrassed, you know, what are you going to send out to one guy? And then it occurred to me, he doesn't know that he's the only one. And um, I think this has happened to other people along the way too, but I, I wrote my first marketing email and I sent it out and lo and behold, the guy bought a piece of property from me. That's awesome. So he was the only one on the list. It was the very first uh, mailing I sent out. And I know I'm not alone in that. I think other people in the community have had that happen too. Um, but that mailing list really is important. And, um, you know, you just let it build slowly over time. And pretty soon you've got, you know, 50 and then 100 and then 500 names and, and just kind of keep going on. Yeah, not not only is the number of people on that list important, but the frequency with which you hit them, hit them up. Yes, yes. Uh, the Scott, correct answer to that would be more frequent than I do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's something you're going to work on in your next venture, living living in your RV and working this business, which I think is just awesome. Tell 
if you could tell people about the community you belong to, because I think this is really cool. I went and joined it earlier on Facebook, uh, Larry. Yeah. Oh, you bet. So, um, uh, you know, the, the land business has built this really cool community with around land geek, um, where we share ideas and help each other and all that. I'm in a different group called the RV entrepreneur and, um, uh, uh, Nat, who was on uh, the, he was interviewed on on the podcast here uh, just uh, I don't know a couple of weeks ago, something like that. Um, he is also over in that other community as well, the RV Entrepreneur, and it's it's a community on Facebook and also in the real world. They also get together, you know, a, a time or two a year, um, where it's designed for people who are not retired, but they are full time RVers who run businesses from their RVs. And so, you know, it's the, the land geek um, land business is just such a nice fit for that because you can do it from anywhere. Um, you know, as long as you've got good connectivity, that's, that's really about all you need. Um, and everything else you can, you can make, you know, you can make happen through either systems or delegating or, or whatever. Um, and Nat did a great job of talking about that. So I won't, I won't rehash everything he said, but uh uh, there's at least two of us out there now who are crazy enough to go, you know, live, live uh, in an RV type vehicle and uh, do the land business. That's really great. It's, it's honestly a goal of mine. Uh, after my, after my boys are, are out and about, uh, I, I would love, I've always dreamed of getting in an RV and just going around the country. And now, now that I have this business to be able to potentially work on the road in this business, I, I mm-hmm. don't know. I love it. I love it a lot. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can do it, you know, yeah. uh, try yeah. it sometime. You can Rent start, an RV for a month. You can, you can start small. My wife and I do it on our fold up bike. So we just go around the, the, you know, local new England area, but it's a small step towards the RV, right? We just do it with the bikes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> hey, as long as you're having fun, that's really what matters. Exactly. <laughs> it's hey, true. Mike, Scott, Mike, it's true. Like we got a bunch of comments for Larry. I think you should read off since you can see the comments. No, now. I really can't anymore. I thought it was bad that I did that. I didn't want to take it from you. So comments, they're all you. Oh, okay. But... Well, I just, Larry got some shout outs. I think we should read those. So let's hear them. Uh, this is from Jim Lala. Uh, Larry was a huge, a huge help, to, huge, as you say, a huge help to me with a Craigslist question I had. A uh, great fella. And then. Uh, glad I could help. I, and I and I love this what what Barbara said again a faithful viewer a lovely commentator Barbara Thibodeau, team Barbara uh, loves the pop up collar yay um, she says she loves how <laughs> some, I love how some of us have been following Mark for years it really is a lifestyle which I yeah. mean you know I've only been it's only been two and a half years for me almost three years for me and I honestly I can't imagine my life now without the community and without yeah being being involved uh t- to some degree so she's she's absolutely right this thing can become a lifestyle and uh it's a lifestyle that reaches not just the financial aspect of your life uh but your your personal growth and your well-being and, and mm-hmm. leaving a legacy for your family and and experiencing time freedom and i mean the list goes on and on and on friendship networking business it, it really goes on and on so uh, I think that's awesome. And then, uh, let's see. Oh, let's see. Andy Welmer said, uh, more land than you think you can sell or the land is taking longer than you expect it to take or the funds you have allocated is getting capped out. Yeah. You know, there's, that's another area that we have options today that we didn't have three years ago. And that is people who are in the community that understand the business who will buy notes you know, right, and right. that's, that's a way to turn cash around, you know, more frequently yeah. able to continue to buy properties as they're coming in. Uh, and that just didn't exist three years ago. Right. So Point. very, a lot of very people, good piece. You know, you meet people at the boot camp, you become very kind of uh, connected. There's people that partner on deals. Somebody may have an excess amount of capital. Someone may just have a great uh, few deals they have coming in. They merge together and it's a win-win. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of ways to kind of, you know, uh, assist and if you have that situation. But uh, that's great. Awesome. Any other comments yeah, there? Definitely. Any other questions? Anything? Well, 
Uh, Barbara, everybody's just got great things to say about Larry. I think we're all excited for him. I mean, Larry, I think we need to have a uh, we need to have a follow up visit with you uh, six months down the road here when you're on the road when you're. Oh, why that'd be have, fun. Why do I have beat the Fockers in my mind? That's all you know. <laughs> Oh man! And well, I, if you come to Massachusetts, make sure you say hello. I don't. Are you gonna go? Anywhere? I just might. You never know. In New England, Maine. You know, coastal Maine is, is beautiful this time of year. Is is spring or fall better? Uh, well, the fall. You know, you got the okay. uh, leaf people. You can be a leaf You can be a leaf people. You got the colors. Like there. The people leaves. <laughs> yeah, it, they all turn colors. We go. We call them leaf peepers. <laughs> you know what? You know what time it? I think it is, Mike. It is that time. I'm gonna bring them up. I think it's time to bring our good friend, the inventor of the refill segment, onto the show. I'm promoting him to a panelist because I have the power, and here he comes. The panelist, Matt Forbes, still awake. Still awake. I made it. it. I made it. How are we doing, gents? Doing great. You've been up since when, Matt? Looks like you're doing great. Uh, Yeah, I just am delusional now. I I got home from the airport at uh, 3 this morning, so... um... Yeah, they're like, yeah, ten thirty Eastern. Barbara, where are you? You're right. <laughs> it's so late. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Let's have a cocktail though. Why not? So I got my makers. Is that uh, boss? Is that what you're drinking? Oh. oh, someone's been drinking more than you though. That's uh, that's a problem. So, <laughs> that right. is a problem. Yes. Here's how this goes. It's not hard. Take your alcohol. Take your glass. Pour it in. You deserve it. You're working hard. There's some left in here. I swear to God. You know what? <laughs> Don't mind me. I'll be over here in the corner. But uh, Larry, great podcast, man. You're an inspiration. Cheers. So cheers. Thank you. Yes. Cheers. Cheers, cheers everyone. everyone. Awesome. Thank mm. you very much. Matt, Matt one thing. Mm. Uh, it's summer. Summer now. Summer? It's summer now. Just saying. Why? Because he has Back- a sweatshirt on? Backdrop. Oh, the backdrop? Yeah, it's not like it change. It doesn't change. It's it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be like that. Uh, I think all the way through. I don't know. You know, I don't know, Bosman. I'll, I'll go sell some land and uh, I'll go get a, a scenic uh, scenic view of like Hawaii with some lava flow and then the background. It'll it'll be lovely. I'll remind awesome. you next week. All right, perfect. Well, I'm gonna bring you back up for the outro if you're still awake. So we'll see. It's gonna be shortly. Don't worry. But Matt, good. thank you so much as always. Uh, Technical advisor, uh, refill specialist, Matt Forbes. Refill refill specialist. specialist. Oh my God. (laughs) Put that on a business card. I'm the refill specialist. How are you? Yeah, it's great to hear. (laughs) Thanks for coming. I'll pull you back up to a panelist shortly. Thanks, Matt. You bet. Uh, Larry, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you coming on. Thank you, guys. uh, It's been it's been fun to be here. Hopefully your RV went to one of the boot camps. We can see you in person when you're out there cruising around. You know. uh, you know, uh, obviously not one. I, I can tell it's not going to be August in uh, Arizona, but maybe uh, Orlando <laughs> in October might be one. That uh, one works way better. Yeah. So um, it'd be great to get an update from you. And it's just it's just great. Um, I really uh, enjoy talking to you and uh, hope to see you yeah. again soon. Uh, you guys, too. Take care. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Larry. Thank you, Larry. See you later. Goodbye. All right. Take care. Good night. Uh, Mark, uh, Mike, that was great. That was great. Larry's a great guy. I think a, a lot of people uh, have a lot of big takeaways from that. And yep, uh, sure. it's, uh, yeah, very good. So, wow, our show's cranking along tonight. You know, it's 10 past the hour. L- let me just talk a little bit more about scaling. Let's, I want some more you complete me. Is that all right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And are there any other comments while I'm doing this? I want to make sure you keep up. Uh, yeah, we're getting some good anything, comments. Though. Anything they need, let's make sure we help, help well, them. I mean, Eric Peterson is watching, so we got to give him a shout out. Eric Peterson, no country for old men. Hey, Eric, did the Cubs win today? I know they they had a great game game yesterday. I know. Sounds like you're talking about baseball. Pretty shocked. Go Cubs! Uh, All right. Um, Let's see here. There, there's actually a long question, a long post from. uh, Let's hear it. Carrie Carrie Sorensen Sparks is her name. I'll answer it. Go for it. She said she just recently heard two podcasts with Land Geek and started following on Facebook. My husband and I have been buying, renovating, and selling residential properties as well as a couple of rentals. Oh, awesome. But we really like to get our feet wet in the raw land area of property investment. We are having difficulty finding an easy way to access the lists for each county of landowners. Is there a website that does these searches for you? 
I'm, I'm finding we spend 20 minutes on each county website, which are not typically very user friendly. And sometimes it only turns up maybe one property that fits the bill of tax delinquent and owner out of town. There has to be a better way to save so much wasted time. Tips, please. Yes. Well, you're hitting, uh, what was her name again? I kind of have the Her name is Carrie. Carrie, what you're hitting is what we call the first brick wall. We we always talk about these brick walls in the business. Brick wall number one is like, there's over 3,000 counties. Where do you go, right? How do you decide which county you're going to go to? And from there, once you decide the county, how are you going to build a list? There's actually a number of ways to do that. I'm not sure if you have access to the toolkit from what you're saying, if you've already become a toolkit member. But if you're not a toolkit member, I would advise you to uh, to you can hook up with Scott or I. What's the uh, what's the uh, link? Can I put it on? So, yeah, I'll put it in right now. So, Carrie, if you want to know more about the toolkit or about flight school, which are ways to get into uh, land investing, uh, <laughs> you can go to www.thelandgeek.com slash training and schedule a call with either Mike or myself. We'd be happy to talk to you about the training uh, materials that we have available. And, and, uh, and so there is websites. I mean, you could go to Agent Pro 247. You could work that site. There's uh, a few other sites out there. But more importantly than that is understanding the process, right? So um, there's a number of ways to skin that proverbial cat, as I say. You know, you can screen scrape. You can, yeah, I know that was pretty good, right? You can screen <laughs> scrape. Uh, you, can, you can use a VA to kind of build your own list. Um, if, you know, there's really no, you know, that really got you, huh? Skin the cat? <laughs> the That's, proverbial. Not only well, it is a proverbial, uh, but there really, there really is no, that is no wall. Once you understand how we do what we do, there's a number of ways to go around that. And uh, it, it's actually very simple. Um, but I would advise you to do a few things. One, schedule a call. Even if you're not going to buy the toolkit, talk to us. We'll talk to you a little bit more about it in person. That way uh, we can give you exactly what you're looking for. And uh, the other thing is um, just, you know, understand that there is a way to do this. This is not a brick wall that should knock you back. This is something that we can definitely help you work through. But uh, great question. Anything else? Uh, that's about it for now. So scaling the we'll, we'll get yes. more time. We'll do a couple more of these and then we'll go to the next segment. How's that? We, you know, we're, I mean, we don't want to end at midnight, do we? So we'll, we'll go move it up a little bit. Okay, it's okay. All right. So scaling the business, right? Um, how about this, Scott? Do I even really need, I don't really want to know about, I mean, there's five distinct aspects of the business. There's mailing, uh, there's the whole due diligence, the closing marketing, the sales. Do I really need to know? I'm, I'm just going to hire a due diligence specialist. I don't even want to know about it. I'm just going to hire someone. Is that a good idea that I would just go, before I even grasp it, just kind of hire somebody else? What do you think of that? I think, I think any business owner who is going to have a successful business, needs to know how every single aspect of that business works and the components of all of these spinning plates that Scott Todd talks about. So although we may be tempted to outsource a lot of these things right away, you know, we do need to go through these pain points ourselves and learn how to scrub a list and learn how to do due diligence on these properties, which honestly isn't that difficult. It takes time, but uh, it, you, you need to go through it a few times on your own and feel the pain of doing it on your own so you can address any future issues that may come up in the due diligence process after you hand that off to somebody else. So, you know, we're, we're huge proponents in this community of continually documenting everything that you do uh, whether it's with like uh, a ScreenFlow type software, or Scapel we use a lot, or, or even, uh, you know, taking videos of the process with which you do something mm-hmm. uh, and, and documenting everything that you do going forward to really uh, perfect things in the end so you can just hand them off to somebody else. But you really need to know the ins and outs of every aspect of this business before you hand it off. Now, the good thing is it doesn't take a ton of time to know all the ins and outs of due diligence, but you do need to do it. 
Uh, that's a great point. Um, Cause I was going to say too, can you, can you scale too early? And the point, the reality is uh, yes, because you need to understand every fundamental aspect of the business. And uh, as you were saying, sc screen recordings, uh, you could use zoom, which we're using to help broadcast right now. I always tell people just record every single thing you do. And every time you do it, you get better. So it's a better version of what you're doing. And eventually you use that to train someone to help you do that process. So right. it's, uh, it's really actually, uh, um, something that can be done in that kind of a, uh, you know, very, um, method, met methodological, how, what's the word method? You methodical? can follow this methodical. How come I couldn't even say it. You, you complete me. Methodical. Yeah, I do. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the next segment. Cause I, I've been waiting wow. to bring this one. I've been waiting for this. You've can been waiting for uh, Oh, really? Are you ready for the shoving already? Well, I, you know, I've been holding on to this paper. I got, I finally have my own shove it quote of the week. I know that's really, it's kind of exciting, isn't it? When you get your own shove it, you don't have to, you know, don't have to reach out to anybody else. Rely this on This one anybody. really, it's like very like personally directed towards me. So it's really unique. All right. So hold on one second. You Yankee. One, one oh, sec. Don't give it away. I didn't. It's time for the shove it quote of the week. Nice. So what is this all about? First time viewers, what's the Shabbat quote of the week? What, what is this even, what is this all about, Scott? All right. Well, we work in a business where people love us and people hate us, right? Right. right. We deal right. in volume. We, we, we deal in volume. We send out purchase agreements to thousands of people. We get, uh, you know, we get people that are, are thankful, sending us thank you cards in the mail for taking this property off of their hands for pennies on the dollar. But then we get people who are slightly angry with which, uh, angry at us for uh, the low amount that we offered. Right. So, and I've actually converted some of these angry people, but that's another story. Because uh, sometimes they just don't understand. So mine right here, I'm uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to paraphrase. Don't see it, just show it. We're fine. It's Facebook. We're adults. It says, Bleep you. F you and your offer, you Yankee mother effer. <laughs> you Yankee. Mike, Mike does live in Massachusetts, everyone. So that's so, probably where that came from. Yeah, probably. So very interesting. But, uh, you know, um, let's see. How much did I offer this person? I mean, I'm sure it was a reasonable offer. Let me see. Uh, yeah, give us some details on that. That was a $1,500 offer for a property down in Texas. Well, I've already, I know I've already got two or three other accepted offers. So I'll take one of these um, argumentative uh, letters. And, 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 you know, that's – listen, what we do – we may, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a game where we um, embrace massive action. So we mail out, we have a three to 5% acceptance rate, one to 2% closing. That leaves a large percentage of people that don't sell us their land. And some of them do get angry, but uh, so we poke fun at it. But the reality is um, some of these people can be converted. I've dealt with people. I don't do the intake anymore, but I call them back and I make a point to call this person back and be like, Hey, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to be offensive. Um, maybe I misjudged your land. Is there something unique about yours? Because typically I do buy land in the area for about that price. And then they will tell me what's so unique. And I'll say, well, maybe yours is worth more. Can I take a look at it? And then all of a sudden the conversation changes. Uh, so it's very interesting. It is. I do have a comment that we need to, uh, <laughs> we need to read off here because right. is it a good one? Yeah, it's a good one. Here we go. It's from uh, Jim Lala. He's a fellow Massachusetts native. What do you call it? You know, I'm a was I'm I'm a uh, I'm I'm a South Dakotan. They they call us mass holes. Mass holes. Okay, excellent. He's a for <laughs> oh geez, Louise. He he's a fellow mass hole. All right. Uh, <laughs> Pretty sure he is. Anyway. That refers to our driving, by the way. He said, uh, "Zeno knows how to charm the haters." I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. All right. Oh, that's funny stuff. Okay. That's, that's um, what I told my wife when we got back from one of the boot camps. I think it was Arizona. I forget where we came back. Got in the car, and I'm like, oh, "You hear that?" She's like, "What?" All the cars honking at us. I didn't hear that where we were. It's like it's like music to my ears. It's like, yeah, we definitely uh, take driving to another level around here. <laughs> Oh, man. Mike, what else do you have to say about scalability? What have we missed? Well, what I want to know is, you know, let's let's cap it off. Like, what's the end game? Why are we even scaling? What's what's you know, can we talk a little bit about why we're doing that? What's the what's the end game? Why, why scale? You know, the, the end game, Mike, is is to be able to do whatever your why is. Right. So. 
I don't know what your why is, but my why is to um, work a heck of a lot less, spend a lot more time with my wife and my boys, my four boys that are growing so quickly. It's crazy. Like every time I turn around, I'm like, how the heck are they getting so big? Where is time going? Right. So the, my why is to work, to honestly work as little as I can, uh, but still feel security, still feel financial stability, still feel freedom. And uh, it's a journey, it's a process, but I'm getting there, right? I see so much more clearly now than I did two and a half, three years ago, that we're on this path to this, to this kind of, I, I think it's a continual journey, honestly, but, but we're getting to the point where, you know, I can, I just feel so much more at ease and so much more peace knowing that I'm going to be able to go forward. Having this business that uh, is growing, but my time in the business is decreasing substantially. So I think we've, I've said that before on here, you know, you are successful in this if the revenue is improving and your and your time freedom is improving, but your time in the business is going down. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, you know, it's um, my wife and I, I, I was joking. We do, we go for these bike rides every morning and, you know, then we go and we get a little lunch and then we come back. And um, the reality is that we're living a lifestyle now that I would think would be akin to what retirement would be for some people in their minds, you know, and it's yeah. just, it's just awesome. And, and, and the reality is this whole scaling process comes to this macro micro view in my mind where you build this process. It's like a box. And sometimes you're the entrepreneur. You got to jump in there and you got to fix things when they when they clog up. Uh, but then you step out and you, and you and the best way to test a system, throw a few thousand offers through it and watch what happens. That's a great test. Of, and you'll find any inefficiencies and clogs at that point. Right. And then you ha- then you go back in as the entrepreneur and you fix it. But you're not going in and actually handling all of the minute details you're fixing the problem that surfaced and, and, and you're, and you're putting something in place to take care of it. So um, whether it's, you know, you're going to turn a nut, screw a bolt, uh, you know, talk to get another VA in there, make another automation, but you go in, you find it and you tweak it and you go back out and you continually do that. And it's, it's remarkable. I mean, the end game really is to, you know, and as my wife and I are talking about, it, it's like, okay, well now once we have, you know, our life in order and everything's running smooth or our fixed expenses taken over by a passive income. What next? Like, what can we do to help the community? It's like, you start to think bigger and it's, it's really cool. I think that that's what I love about this community is that we're all kind of like-minded like that. You know, again, we take our business uh, very serious ourselves, not so much, right? We, we right. really and we're ethical, we're transparent. So the end game is that enjoyment and that giving back because you have the time and the wherewithal to do so. So very cool. Um, I, I think, uh, um, that's pretty cool, uh, summary of this whole scaling. I think we kind of, if I say so nailed it on, nailed it on the head, right? We, We did nail it on the head. I think, um, I think we do have, uh, another thing we need to do tonight. We do have a giveaway. All right, let's do it. Right. What are we giving away? Let's give away stuff. Well, I think. Well, I think I think we really need to give away the the Amazon bestseller, Dirt Rich. Yes, signed copy of Dirt Rich, don't you think? Absolutely, absolutely. And I've been taught. We, you know, Scott and I, we're fortunate. We talk to everybody that like wants to come and learn more about the business. And a lot of people have been really say, I'm like, where'd you hear about the business? Well, I heard a podcast. And I read this book, Dirt Rich. It's it's out there. Yeah, people are loving it. It really is. It's really awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I've spoken to, uh, one, I spoke to one guy this week who he had never heard of Mark, uh, heard him on a podcast this week, ordered dirt rich and read all 200 pages in about a day. And he was on the phone talking to me and it was just, it was really neat to hear how in just a very short period of time, you know, 48 hours earlier, he had never heard of Mark Podolsky. And now he is motivated to potentially, uh, take some steps forward in this community to change his life. I mean, that's just, that's awesome. I mean, Mark, that shows right there that what you did with this book, I mean, if it touches one person, that's amazing, but you know, it's going to touch a lot of people. 
So yeah. I don't know. It's it's pretty awesome. Well, that's usually what happens. People, when they come to us, first thing they need to realize, this isn't some kind of crazy infomercial, right? This is a real business model. It just takes dedication to the process, right? There's fundamental things that have to happen every day, and you have to do them. And eventually, you have other people do them and other processes in place. So uh, once you realize it and you're like, whoa, I see the ability to leverage my time and my money, with, and then it's like, how do I get involved? And the people who take that massive action are the people that reap the benefits. So, and again, Taking massive action means you might make a mistake or two, but you know what? You can recover from that. If you just sit on the sidelines and think about it, there's really no recovery from non-action, right? Other than action, right? You have to take action. But if it's wrong, right, wrong, or indifferent, you can recover from it. So it's kind of, uh, you know, it's, that's the way you should approach it, I believe. That's that's awesome. That's awesome advice. Dude, buddy. All Dude, right. Buddy. So without We're further ado... We have a giveaway to do. Uh, oh, that was pretty good. You're like, you know, what was it? Like, remember Sesame Street with the, uh, the, the with the count? What was his name? Didn't he rhyme a lot? The was count? That, yeah, did, the count. Didn't he rhyme a lot? He counted a lot. I knew that. About to have one book, two books. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Who would, that, who would ever thought we'd be talking about Sesame Street on this show? Great show. A lot of good points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so here we go. One you ready? Or two land deals. <laughs> We're one, to, one giveaway, two giveaways. Here we go. Free copy of, of Dirt Rich. Wait, signed. is it going to be signed? All right, good. It's going to be signed. Yep. It's going to be signed. You ready? Here I'm we ready. Go. Oh, my gosh. That is very well deserved. Are you ready? Here we go. Slow it down. Can't see it. Can't see it. Can't see it. Andy Wilmers. Andy Wilmers. And the crowd goes wild. Our most faithful viewer, besides Barbara Thibodeau, gets a signed copy of Dirt Rich. Awesome. Congratulations, that awesome. Andy. That's that's phenomenal. Scott. All right. So let's let's say one last thing here. I would just uh, recommend to anyone who has never seen the show before and they're watching this and they might be inspired to take some. Oh, they might be thinking, why are these guys wearing robes? <laughs> right, right, right. Um, that's another story. That's another story for another time. But if if you happen to, if if you happen to be someone who, like myself, a few years ago was kind of at a crossroads in life. I had just turned forty. Uh, I did. I was not happy with where I was in life. Uh, I did not feel the security I needed. And no I was looking for something. No robe. Right. Yeah, the robe brought it. You had no robe that time. I'm I had no robe. Time. There was no robe. The Langy community did it for me. If any of you are interested, Mike and I would love to talk to you about it at any time. Uh, the Langy.com slash training. We can talk about the business model. We can talk about the programs Mark has uh, in getting started in this business. And Mike? You too, and you too can get a letter like this. And you too can be part of the show. On the flip side, so you know, there's like ten more deals I'm closing on. So this is yeah. just, this is just it's a numbers game. So, but you can make a 95 year old lady happy as can be too by taking her land from her. So that didn't sound right. She's taking the land. She's selling it. That's to not us. what I meant. I know. I want to make sure the viewers don't misinterpret. That. <laughs> I'm gonna take old lady's land. No, come on. That's not what I meant. <laughs> I, I love little, I love little old ladies. They're my favorite. No, actually, the best because you get sometimes you get these letters and, and re come back and it's just so meticulously written and you know you're dealing with somebody that's in the '90s and and in those deals, you know what? You close them uh, via like a mobile notary or something, and it's just uh, it, it takes a little longer, but they close so well because you know these people uh, they they mean what they say and what they write and they're easy to work with. Yeah, for sure. And they are happy to get rid of the land. All right. Are we ready for a toast? Are you going to bring Matt Forbes back up? Yeah, let me see if I can bring them both up. I don't know if Larry's still there. But let's see. I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring uh, Matt up. And let's see if, hope we don't get him on a we'll bring, uh, we'll bring Larry Forbes back up. Hopefully we don't catch him on a like, oh, I didn't know it was coming back on. <laughs> no, it beeps pretty loud. It's tough to miss. All right. There you are, Larry. You, you are, are there. Good. <laughs> I was paying attention. <laughs> All right, so Scott, boss man, what's the toast? Well, uh, I'm gonna get I, the I just, ready. 
I would actually like to wish uh, uh, Larry well, and and this is a toast to Larry, and good luck to you mm. in your new venture, and uh, and traveling down a road you've never been down, so to speak. I think it's awesome. I think it's it's inspirational. I think uh, I would love to do it someday, and I'm excited to hear how it goes. So make sure to let us know. But good luck to you, and keep in touch. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Prost. Cheers. Cheers. Go skull. Matt, uh, Mike, you going to drink or not? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was getting the outro already. Yeah, Zeno. <laughs> Start drinking. My God, man. You see the screen? Here we go. The outro. You guys see the screen, right? It's ready to go? We do, yeah. Matt, thank you. Larry, thank you. Scott Bosman, you complete me. Thank you. Everybody, see you next week. Pop that collar, Bosman. Anybody got pop a collar to pop? Pop it. Pop it. Pop it like it's hot. <laughs> Oh, God. Degenerating. Everybody. Come on, Scott. Shouldn't you be doing this kind of thing, Bob? All right. Oh, he did the row. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm going to try to I'm going to end the meeting. I think that's going to end the live broadcast. Have a great night.